Well guys, welcome into today's video. Thanks so much for spending a few minutes of your day with me here today. We've got a big video planned for you here today. So in this video, we're gonna get into the 10 hottest stocks in the entire S&P 500. These stocks I'm gonna share with you, they're across many different industries, many different categories, many businesses doing many different things, and I can tell you they are all red hot. Wait till you see how much these stocks are going up, okay? And in this video, I'm also gonna share with you why I think these stocks have been so hot. Like, why have these stocks been going up so much, okay? After that, we'll talk about if I think these stocks will stay hot or if they're gonna start going down, which is obviously a very important part of the video. Video, right? It's one thing if you are a hot stock, it's another if you can stay hot, right? From there, I'll tell you a little bit about these different businesses and these different companies so you can figure out if those are stocks you want to look into. The goal at the end of the day is to be able to sit in a porter potty and look into some stocks and try to figure out is this the next hot stock or is this stock going to stay hot? And so if you want to do some research, okay, there are special places you can do it. Hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, if you don't mind, smash that thumbs up button. As always, 10,000 is a goal. I don't think we've hit 10,000 thumbs up in a while. So that is a goal we're trying to reach in this video, guys. It's gonna take every single soul watching this video to smash that thumbs up button. Do not take it for granted, okay? If you wanna join Stock Hub absolutely for free, you can do so. That will be the pinned comment down there. That allows you to talk stocks with literally over 30,000 investors from all over the world about a ton of different stocks in the market. So yeah, absolutely free to do so. If you wanna check it out, it's linked in the description. If you wanna to try to apply for my private stock group, you can also do that in the description area. I might even have that as like one of the pinned comments if you want to try it, apply in there so you can know everything I look for when investing in a stock, how I run a portfolio, all those sorts of things, okay? So this list here today is gonna be a countdown from number 10, so the 10th best stock, the 10th hottest stock, to the number one most hot stock. And let me ask you guys, can you guess number one, the number one hottest stock in the entire S&P 500? I would love to hear from you guys. All right, guys, let's start getting that. So 10th best up here of them all is a company Company named Align Technology, ticker symbol ALGM. Okay, this stock has had an 82% gain here in 2020. So you know this list is going to be some high flying stocks when the the 10th best on the list is an 82% gain. Okay, this company has a, a little over a 40 billion dollar market cap as of right now. Okay, it's a dental related company. They they have the Invisalign product, which a ton of you guys probably have used in the past or you've heard of. Essentially, at the end of the day, they have relationships with orthodontists and dental office and those sorts of things and they're very intertwined. They have a different business model than something like a Smile Direct Club, ticker symbol SDC has, okay? Very, very different. $2.3 billion in annualized net revenues, over 9 million Invisalign patients, over 1,000 active patents and they now have over 17,000 employees at this company, okay? As far as why I think this stock has been a beast, it's just they destroyed earnings, like insane style in their latest quarter, okay? The estimate was for them to do 67 cents of EPS, okay? And they did $2.25. That's an insane beat, okay? That's a $1.58 beat on EPS. Are you kidding me? You must be flipping my flapjacks. That's insane. That's a 235 percentage point beat there. Absolutely unreal, okay? And then if you look exactly after those earnings, the stock went beast mode, okay? I mean, look at that. It went from 300 into the 500 right after that earnings. And that's honestly why the stock has performed so amazing. Literally, those earnings were so unreal to Wall Street that everybody piled in that stock right away pretty much and just has continued to pile in that stock. It was, abs I mean, the, the earnings were just insane. I mean, when you have that type of beat, I mean, it gets it gets a lot of folks' attention, okay? And the interesting thing about Align Technology, okay, is this stock actually might stay hot in 2021, okay? Remember, a lot of people have been putting off dental work here in 2020. Why? Because a lot of people have fears about, you know, if they go to the dental office, they might get the Roni or something like that, right? Uh, and also, a lot of dental offices have been closed part of the year, and some dental offices have only been open if it's like, you know, you need like a, an emergency type of dental work, okay? So imagine how many people will start coming back into, you know, the dental offices in 2021 and moving forward, okay? And that's where this one can get very interesting. I know me personally, I've been putting it off. I mean, look at my teeth, they, they need some work, okay? My kid, his teeth keep falling out, okay? We need to go see the dentist, so that one might stay hot. All right, guys, let's get into stock number nine up here. Freeport McMoran, ticker symbol F, C, 
X, okay? This one has gone up 90% here in 2020. It's a $24.50 stock as of today, market cap of over a little over 35 billion on this company. If you never heard of Freeport Macmoran, they engage in the mining of mineral properties in North America, South America, and Indonesia. The company primarily explores for copper, gold, uh, something I can't pronounce, silver and other metals, as well as a little bit of oil and gas, okay? Now, if you look at Freeport Macmoran, it's clear, man, they had some really strong numbers recently, okay? They had a 250% EPS beat back a couple quarters ago. This past quarter, they beat EPS by 38%, but not just that, okay? And this is what's very, very important. Look at how much EPS has gone up from like two cents, you know, if you go back four quarters ago to now 29 cents, that's a huge beat. But also, not just that. Everybody's prepping up for 2021 to be an amazing year for this company. They're gonna make money hand over fist, a lot of people are believing, okay? From basically a revenue decline of almost 5% in 2020 to what analysts on average expect 34% plus revenue growth in 2021. I mean, everybody's pretty much expecting this company to have an amazing 2021, and I can see why the stock has climbed so much. Look at this, okay? The company, in, in the current year is expected to do 48 cents of EPS, okay? Next year, $1.82 of EPS. That's ridiculous, okay? That's uh, like well over a 3X of EPS year over year. Absolutely insane, okay? Now, I fully understand why this stock has gone up so much, but here what here's what I'm gonna tell you guys, okay? Be careful with a stock like FCX, okay? They are in a commoditized industry, and I can tell you, I've been through this, okay? These commoditized type stocks that are in commoditized industries, they're on top of the world one minute, and the next minute, it's the end of the world, okay? It's like, as soon as you see their revenues going crazy and the profits pouring in, that's usually the time to sell out of these stocks. They are not the best for long-term holders, okay? I can just tell you, these are like anything commodity related, not the best stocks to hold for the long term. Usually they go through some very hot times, like I said, on top of the world and other times, man, it is the end of the world, okay? So be careful. Be very careful with a stock like that, okay? Stock number eight up here of these 10 stocks. The eighth best performer is ServiceNow, ticker symbol now. And I know a lot of you guys have probably never heard of this company ever before in your life, okay? Unless you work for big enterprises or companies in general, okay? 91% gainer here in 2020, okay? It's got a $106 billion mark cap. I can tell you a lot of people have never heard of this company before and it's got a $106 billion mark cap on it, which just goes to show you like, Man, the, the, you know, there's the list of stocks to look into out there is literally unlimited, okay? And so many times people wanna say, oh, I can't find any stocks. It's like, man, you just gotta start looking. Google, like go through the S&P 500 list. There's so many companies. Go through the Russell 2000 list. It's extreme, okay? ServiceNow, they provide enterprise cloud computing solutions that defines, structures, and consolidates, manages, automates services for enterprises worldwide. If you wanna read much more into the business, you can. They do a lot around IT service, cloud, all those sorts of things. It's a B2B company at the end of the day, and I think that's why a lot of people have probably never even heard of this company, okay? I gotta say, this is one of my favorite five-year charts I've ever seen in my life. Like, look at that five-year chart. It's just a thing of beauty from, you know, when it was 50-something dollars a share a few years ago to now over 500. And, you know, it's had a couple dips, but not like huge gargantuan dips. And just up, up, up and away. It, like I said, it's one of the most beautiful five-year charts I've ever seen. I looked at that and I was like, that is a thing of beauty, okay? I love that. I'm in love with this chart, okay? Now, let's go ahead and look at the earnings history. You can see why this stock is a beast. They deliver quarter in and quarter out. And people trust companies from an investment standpoint that beat consistently. Quarter after quarter, literally four quarters in a row beat. 10% beat, 10% beat, 21, almost 22% beat, 17.5% beat. That's the type of company that is, you know, people look at and they say, this business is a beast, this management team's a beast, we love this, okay? And it all starts to make sense, okay? Now, if they keep this up, I wouldn't be surprised if this company doesn't keep beasting, okay? I mean, 454, they're supposed to do an EPS this year, 557 next year. Next year, they expect to grow another 25%. I mean, honestly, guys, if they keep that up, I wouldn't be surprised if this stock doesn't keep beasting, okay? But here's the thing with this ServiceNow company, okay? 
you know, the valuation is very, very, very rich in this company. Doesn't mean it doesn't deserve it, okay? It just, it is a very rich valuation. So even if they do have some insane numbers continuing, doesn't always mean that the stock's gonna continue to go up. It's a 95, right? A 95 plus Ford P, it's a 25 plus price to sales ratio. So it's not a cheap stock, but it is a beast stock, okay? Stock number seven up here of these 10 stocks, seventh best performer in the S&P 500 is FedEx Corporation, 92% gainer in 2020, okay? The stock's are a little under $300 here today, okay? Now, first thing you gotta understand with FedEx is this was a stock that was beaten down going into 2020, okay? It really was. I mean, this stock was down to 100 something dollars a share, like $150 a share. It was absolutely just not in a good place, okay? And, and so you could look at that and you say, well, this is kind of a bit of a turn play, okay? And then they've come in the last three quarters and destroyed numbers, okay? And you start to figure out why this is the seventh best performing stock in the entire S&P 500, okay? I mean, look at this. Estimate was $1.52 a couple quarters ago. They ended up doing $2.53. That was a beat of $1.01, okay? This latest quarter, the estimate was $2.69. They did $4.87, a beat of $2.18, 81% beat, okay? I mean, when you look at that, you begin to understand, yeah, this company, I can understand why their stock's up 92% or whatever this year because it, it went from a bean down dog to just destroying earnings. Absolutely brilliant, okay? Now, in terms of FedEx's 4P, if you're thinking, can the stock keep it up, okay? You know, here's the thing with FedEx. It's trading at about an 18.7 forward P, okay? FedEx is a very well-established company. We all know this, okay? FedEx usually trades, at least from what I've seen in the past, okay? Usually trades at 11 to 17 forward P, okay? So it's trading a little rich right now. It's not trading insanely rich. Like I said, most of the time I've seen in the past 11 to 17, but they have been blowing numbers away. And it's like, <laughs> if they keep that up, obviously the stock's gonna continue to rise. So this is one of those that's a little bit of a hard one, okay? Now this next stock, the sixth best performer in the S&P 500. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, okay? I've never heard of this company in my entire life, okay? Never heard of them. And I'm just like, what is this company, okay? This is a company, okay? Albert Marley Corporation, ticker symbol ALB. It's a $136 stock. It is the sixth best performing stock in the entire S&P 500. A hot stock to say the least, okay? 94% gain in 2020. That is insane, okay? Just an absolute beast. It's a $14.4 billion market cap on this company, okay? And I, I was like, what is this company? I gotta look into this a bit. And I started reading through it. And as soon as I saw lithium, I was like, oh, EVs, it's an EV play, okay? Because here's the thing, anything that has anything to do with EVs has had a very, very hot 2020, okay? And so obviously, I think that's why this one is doing so well. I Like I said, I don't know this company very well. Maybe they got other things going for them. But as soon as I saw lithium and, and EVs in their description, I said, oh, this makes sense, okay? And I'm slacking on this one, man, because I, I lived in Charlotte for a couple years, man. I lived in Charlotte from like 2013 to 2015. So the fact that I don't know this company, man, I'm, I'm slacking a bit. But in regards to this stock, you know, once again, it's not a stock I follow, but it's interesting because you look at the numbers, they're, they're pretty blah, right? I mean, 14.4% decrease in business in 2020, right? Next year, 2021, they're expected to only have revenues go up 3.3%. As far as EPS goes, $3.97 current year, $4.09 expected next year. Like those numbers are super blah. So I'm not sure exactly what people are seeing in the stock other than just like the fact that in its terms, it has EVs in there and, and lithium. So, you know, if anybody owns a stock, let me know what you're seeing in this one because just based upon the numbers, I'm like, hmm, I, I don't quite get this one, you know, as far as the numbers go, okay? 4P of 33, 34 in the stock. So once again, if you're a holder of that stock and, and you're a big believer in that company, let me know in the, the comments section, like why you're so bullish on that stock because I'm actually pretty interested, okay? PayPal is number five hottest stock in the entire S&P 500, okay? PayPal Corporation has gone up 100% in 2020. It has been a double up stock, okay? PYPL, beast, $270 billion market cap, roughly. I hope everybody knows PayPal that is watching this video right now. It's a mobile payments company. They know, I mean, you should know it from the PayPal app, okay? 
And if you don't know from there, maybe you know Venmo, okay? I think those are like the two main ones that people know, like PayPal, Venmo. You have PayPal, you have Venmo, okay? And when it comes to PayPal, like this company's just a flat out beast. Now before I get more into PayPal, like why do I get these ads like crazy? Ever since I got to Arizona, like this company must be making bank. Like I don't even drink and they just got like money to pour into ads like crazy, man. Holy smokers, that ain't no joke. It's like, I, I can, literally can't get enough ads for this company right now. Like, my goodness, okay? All right, guys, so back-to-back -back beats. And I'm not talking about back-to-back -back as in the Drake Meek Mill song, okay? I'm talking about back-to-back -back great beats on the numbers, okay? Look at this. 21.6% beat two quarters ago. 13.8% beat a quarter ago, okay? And keep in mind, PayPal is a company that analysts are always trying to figure out the numbers and, and really nail them down. And so for them to come in with nice beats like that back-to-back -back quarters, you can kind of see why this stock has doubled up here in 2020. Now, when it comes to PayPal, what's interesting about this stock? And if it, we're thinking, is it gonna stay a hot stock or is it gonna fall back down? It's not exactly a cheap stock, but it's not super expensive. The 4P on this is, let's say, a little under 50, okay? Yeah, that's over, you know, a little over double up what the market's trading at on average for the 4P, but PayPal likely has a lot of growth in front of it for future years, right? And also it's a payment related company and those companies usually just trade at a premium to the market anyways, okay? Look at Visa historically, look at MasterCard historically, like that's just kind of like the way those type of companies trade. So. It's a very interesting stock, I gotta say. And like I said, it's not like, oh my gosh, PayPal is so cheap, but it's, you, you, honestly, it's, it's hard to say the stock is like overvalued or something like that because the fact that they have phenomenal growth in front of them, okay? Very interesting one. Coming in at the number four of 10 best performing stock in the entire S&P 500 recently is AMD, up 101%. 101% in 2020, absolute animal of a stock, okay? $116 billion market cap on this one, okay? AMD is known for its GPU products, maybe a few other things as well, but mainly like GPUs, okay? Mad respect to Lisa Su, okay? I tell you, when this lady came to that company, especially when she you know, began as CEO of the company, I mean, the company was done. The company was a joke. No one took this company serious, okay? And I mean nobody. I mean, it was like, like how many days until AMD goes bankrupt, okay? And she's just been a beast, okay? I remember she took over CEO, I think it was like 2014, 15, when she kind of came in as CEO of the company, sometime around then. I mean, you go back, you know, back to 2015, it was a $2 stock. It was done for. It was a joke. It's $96 here today. It's been a beast. And you know why? Because they keep beasting numbers. Look at this. A couple quarters ago, 16 cents was expected. They came in with 18 cents. That was a nice beat. The latest quarter, 36 cents of EPS was expected. They do 41 cents. It's just consistent beats for this business. Inconsistent, very nice growth. Look at current year, 41.7% growth expected. Next year, 26%. There's a huge just positive feeling from investors and customers as well, like just generally around AMD in recent years. And so you look at this stock and it's like, okay, with all that positivity, with everything they got in the pipeline, with the team they have in place nowadays, and with those type of growth rates, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised that this stock continues to be a very, very good stock, just like flat out, okay? I mean, it's a very competitive industry there, and there's no doubt about it. Everybody wants to take market share from everybody, right? But man, they've just done so dang good competing. And it's hard to say, it's hard to point the stock and say they're not gonna continue to perform beastly. Lisa Sue, I wouldn't doubt her. I just, I just, you know, after everything she's put, you know, the company through over the past five, six years, as far as the transformation goes, like, you know, it's just one of those CEOs, you know, you can't doubt them. You just gotta applaud them and say, well done, man. Well dang done. I wish I would've bought the stock at $2 or $3 a few years ago, but hey, I didn't. But I also didn't know this Lisa Sue lady was about to just change the whole dang world when it came to her company. Amazing stuff, okay? Number three, some people would consider this company to be a little bit of a competitor to AMD, okay? NVIDIA Corporation, and they do compete a little bit with AMD in some product lines, other product lines that compete with a lot of other companies, okay? Ticker symbol NVDA, number three, best performing stock in the entire S&P 500 with over 120% gain here in 2020. What a beast, okay? All you, I guess all you need is AMD and NVIDIA in your portfolio in 2020 and you've been beasting, okay? Market cap on this one of $327 billion. I mean, we're talking about, you know, NVIDIA is becoming a real beast big company, okay? I think this is another just beautiful five-year chart. I mean, look at this, from 25 bucks 
to 500 plus here today. I mean, that's just unreal. I mean, just a real thing of beauty. That's all I can say about that one. Well done to anybody that's been along for that ride on NVIDIA. Absolutely incredible, okay? You can see why NVIDIA is such a B stock. You can see it, okay? This is why people will always put NVIDIA kind of in the stocks to buy category rather than just like a stock to watch. Because you look at this, it's just beat after beat after beat after beat. Four straight beats for this company. Four straight, okay? I mean, you know, that's, when, when investors are looking at a company, they're looking for a management team that continues to outperform what everybody else expects, okay? And especially those big funds, they love that. And this company just continues to outperform on the number side. It's amazing. As far as current year numbers go, 51% revenue growth expected. Next year, 20 plus percent revenue growth expected. 972 EPS expected current year. Next year, 1169 for NVIDIA. So, I mean, you, you look at NVIDIA and you're looking at these numbers, right? And you're saying to yourself, man, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the stock doesn't continue to be a pretty dang good stock in future years, just based upon the fact that they continue to be a beast company. And they got Jensen Huang there, who's done an amazing job with this company. And NVIDIA reminds me a little bit of PayPal in the sense of, you look at its forward P, and it's certainly not cheap. It's not like, oh, it's only a 46, what a great deal. But at the same time, you look at it and you look at the type of numbers they're putting up, 51% revenue growth, then 20% plus revenue growth. You look at the beats four quarters in a row, and you say to yourself, man, maybe this stock is still, even though it's jumped 120 something percent 2020, maybe it's not like that cheap after all, okay? And this is always one of the hardest things when it comes to stock market, is when you see a stock that's already gone up a lot, and you say, okay, that stock's gone up a bunch already, so I shouldn't buy into it. It's one of the hardest decisions, and it's been something that's cost me a lot of money in my investing career in the past 12, 13 years since I've been in the market, okay? It cost me a lot of money where I would like look into a stock, wouldn't buy it, it would go up a bunch, and I wouldn't buy it just because it had gone up a bunch. Sometimes, you, you know, the best way to look at it is, is this company still gonna continue to be a beast in future years? And if it is, usually it makes sense to buy it, swallow your pride and say, hey, I'm in this. If you're like, no, it's just, I can't see it being a beast anymore, or it's you know gonna start downtrending, it's gone up way too much, perfectly fair game. But I can tell you there's been plenty of stocks in my time that I've looked into and I've been like, this company's gonna t continue to outperform, but I didn't buy it just because I didn't wanna have to take that hit of just like, Oh, I, I looked into it back then and it was cheaper, okay? So don't, don't ever make that mistake. I'm, not, not, I'm just kind of speaking metaphorically and just kind of telling you guys a little advice, not really just telling you about, about NVIDIA. I'm just telling you that in general, okay? Stock number two up here. Who would have ever guessed this one? L Brands, ticker symbol LB. It's the second best, the second hottest stock in the entire S&P 500. I mean, no way, okay? I mean, what? I mean, you would have expected it to be some beast tech company or something. Little, like, boring L brands? Are you kidding me? The second best performing stock in the entire S&P 500? They own Victoria's Secret, Bath & Body Works, and the pink brand? Who would have thunk it, okay? But here's what's going on with L brands, okay? L brand stock soars after Victoria's Secret growth, Bath & Body Works reaches records, okay? It's a perfect scenario. Sales at Bath & Body Works rose 55% to 1.7 billion with one third of the brand's growth coming from soaps and sanitizers categories. Guys, what an absolute perfect scenario when you own a company that is known for selling soaps and sanitizers as Bath & Body Works is. This is a perfect storm 55% growth, like Bath & Body Works was like a, a great business before, it was growing like five, 10%. 55%, like perfect, the perfect stock for the perfect time when everybody cares more, like people care more about sanitizers and soaps in 2020 than in all of human history combined, okay? Just a perfect business model at the perfect time, okay? Look at this, okay? Now, L Brands, here's where things get interesting. Before the whole Rony Rona situation, L Brands was, is basically gonna separate Victoria's Secret and Bath and & Body Works. I think this was a, a, a poor decision. You know, you, you say at the time it was a good decision, but now looking at it, I think they should actually stay together, okay? In the past, it was like, yeah, they probably should split them, and now it's like, no, I think they should actually keep them, okay? Here, here's where things are gonna get messy, okay? Victoria's Secret now is posting some actually pretty decent numbers. Like Victoria's Secret had been the drag. The business has started 
to turn for the better, okay? So that's really good. And BB Dub, you know, Bath and Body Works has been posting amazing numbers, okay? Crazy numbers, as we just looked at, 55% revenue growth year over year, like that's just crazy, okay? But where this is gonna get messy is you're gonna separate these companies. Bath and Body Works is also gonna go from insane growth to potentially decreases in revenues or very slight increases and people are gonna start worrying about that business. And then you got Victoria's Secret who a lot of people just don't wanna be in that business model. I think it makes for a little bit of a messy situation. I think, you know, at first it looked like it was a smart, but now since 2020 has happened and we've seen everything that's transpired, I think it's actually probably uh, a little bit of a mistake, okay? All right, you guys, now let's get into number one, right? Number one best performing stock in the entire S&P 500, okay? You would think it would be Tesla, right? Well, the truth is, as of recording this, Tesla has not been included into the S&P 500. If it was in the S&P 500, Tesla would be the number one best performing stock in the entire S&P 500, but Tesla is not in as of today, okay? It is a stock named Etsy, okay? Ticker symbol, E-T-S-Y. Number one best stock, 275% gainer here in 2020. I mean, the hottest of the hot stocks, okay? $23 billion market cap as of today. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know Etsy, but they're kind of known for like, like people like making products in like their, their home office or like their living room and like posting it on Etsy. And it's just, it's, uh, a business model that was already very compelling before Rony Rona happened, and ever since, it's gone to way higher levels because people are just kind of thinking more than ever about supporting, you know, small people and like small businesses and things like that. And just Etsy is that place at the end of the day. It's like the anti of like Walmart or like Amazon or like the big corporations that like it's just like, hey, where can we get it the cheapest? Where can we get that bowl made the cheapest in China or in some other part of the world? Okay, and Etsy is all about like handcrafted stuff and people actually doing it at their house and like the, the care behind the product and things like that. And it's what makes Etsy really special and it's a perfect business model, especially for Rony Rona times. The numbers have been pretty amazing on this company. They beat three out of the last four quarters and when they do beat, they beat huge, okay? Absolutely huge. And not just that, they posted some crazy revenue growth this year, 97%, okay? And I think that's why this stock has been so beast. The numbers had just been epic for Etsy this year, okay? Now, here's where things could be interesting. Here's why even though Etsy has gone up 275% this year, it could potentially stay a hot stock, okay? I wouldn't be surprised, and here's why. Analysts only have this company growing revenues 12% this upcoming year. What if they beat that? I think there's a definitely a good chance they could beat that and beat it huge if they do, okay? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you don't mind, smash a thumbs up. We're going for 10,000 thumbs up on this video. We need every single soul that watches this video to smash a thumbs up. Helps us out in the YouTube algorithm big time. If you want to join Stock Hub, it's absolutely free to do so. I'll have that as a pinned comment. If you want to try to apply for my private stock group, I'll have that as a pinned comment as well. Thank you for watching and have a great day.